Hey Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. Hey everyone, Matt Napoli here. Welcome to episode 157 of Snack Minute. This week we have our friend Abdiel uh, joining us. Um, now I, I, he's going to talk about Splunk and Thousand Eyes. Last week um, you might have seen Kareem talk about Splunk in Meraki. Um, so we're just going to take that a step forward and talk about uh, Splunk and Thousand Eyes with Abdiel. Abdiel, um, please uh, introduce yourself and then we'll jump right into it. Hey Matt, hey uh, Kareem. I'm Deal here. I'm a product solutions architect, and I want to try to answer a few questions that we've received from the field uh, in recent times uh, related to the Thousandized Splunk integration, and you know, shed some light around what is uh, you know the main use cases and how we can complement each other. Yeah, that's really exciting. Um, you know, we've kind of hinted around Splunk here on Snack Minute and. I haven't really seen it in detail too much until Kareem showed us last week, but I'm uh, really excited to see how these two platforms kind of come together and uh, how our, our um, snackers can take advantage of it. Especially Thousand Eyes. I, I think there's, I'm super excited to learn more about this. Up to you. Yeah. So, you know, some of the questions that we've been receiving is, you know, what are the use cases that we can solve with this integration? How can we do it, you know, beyond the me mechanics of integrating them, which we have had an episode about that on Snap Minute with our friend Alejandro, uh, you know, talking about hotel integration with Splunk. Yep. Uh, that's a very easy thing to do. But beyond that, you know, how do you use it? And then uh, there have been even some misconceptions around uh, comparing the two, you know, Thousand, thousand Eyes and Splunk with it, where uh, they're really not uh, two tools that you would compare in the market. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to talk today. And, you know, if I had to put it in a couple of sentences, uh, what I would say about Thousand Eyes is that, you know, Thousand Eyes will give you the visibility or end-to-end -end visibility uh, in terms of networks, right? Uh, even networks that you don't own besides the networks or your internal networks. That's what Thousand Eyes is really great at you know one of our most famous use cases um and when you think about splunk you have to think about visibility from your systems right from the enterprise from your applications from your servers from uh what's um interacting together on your enterprise network um or on your enterprise applications and servers i should say so you know i think that should bring some clarity to both of the tools you know what are you able to get from one or the other? The other point of uh, information that I can give you is that Splunk is uh, a specialist uh, correlating, it has a very powerful search engine. It has its own language even, right? SPL yep. uh, that you can use to query data uh, from all of the different data sources that you, that, that you get in Splunk. Now, the other thing is that Splunk usually gets one layer type of information. And by one layer, I mean, you know, it's either a specific domain or a specific metric. You know, with Thousand Eyes, you have the visibility of um, multiple layers at the same time. And we've, I know we've covered this before. I'm going to show you here on my screen just a quick example to, uh, you know, paint a picture of what I'm talking about. But if you see here in our views, this is a page load test and we have our web metrics uh, down to network and then routing uh, metrics. So this is uh, something that's just very different uh, that we have with Thousand Eyes. If I go to Splunk here, I wanna show you a little dashboard that we have uh, that we are where we are receiving the data, the same data that we are seeing here from this page load test. We are displaying it here on this dashboard, and you can see the uh, availability, response time, uh, packet loss, and latency. And then, you know, trying to go with that flow on the first chart, we have response time versus latency, and that's how you can start to see the different uh, types of data. So even those, uh, you know, we have. Uh, synthetic use case here, uh, we have to uh, focus on the correlation that you can do from the different layers that you have available. So, uh, Abdil, one of the things we, yeah, one of the things we talked about oh, um, when integrating Meraki was kind of how we can move that data from from Meraki to to Splunk. 
Um, are you going to show us how how you can move that data from Thousand Eyes to to Splunk to kind of uh, do that slicing and dicing, manipulating, and, and graph creation? Right. Um, so the the integration itself it's quite straightforward. Let me go to that page here. Um, we're basically selecting all of the information that you want to send over open telemetry. So in this case, oh, cool. we have selected one test. In this case, the page load test. And mm -hmm. actually, that's a very uh, good question because you know one of the good the, the the points that we need to understand is the type of information that you can send from Thousand Eyes towards right. Splunk. And so for that, we have a, a really good document that explains the open open telemetry metrics that you can get. So uh, think about it in terms of tests which tests we have available at Thousand Eyes from the application down to the network and BGP layers, um, and then what metrics you can get from, from there. And with this document, you should be able to build your dashboards and manipulate the data on Splunk, uh, because basically this is, this is the naming convention that you're going to be using while searching for something in Splunk. So the integration is very straightforward. Uh, you know, yeah. select the test test data that you want to send to Splunk. Uh, have your target, your authentication headers, and that's it. You know, you can also send or stream endpoint agent information, and that's about it. You know, it, it will receive the information as it's showing here, right? So. One of the things that you would need to do once you're at Splunk is start building these queries of the information that you want to display. For example, in this case, I'm okay. querying for HTTP response time metrics. And within that event or data point, there are several pieces of information that you can use, uh, response code, server, IP address, etc. And here's where it gets interesting because Splunk is supposed to be a centralized location for uh, receiving logs, events, you know. So say there's a use case where a customer is already monitoring their servers um, for, for a particular application that they're running, um, and they send syslog or server logs to Splunk. You know, server IP address is uh, something that we could use to correlate that uh, to uh, understand the outside visibility of you know what's your user experience towards those servers so you know kind of uh, following on that use case if uh, i'm a network administrator or an application owner which are two very different personas you know net the network administrator would usually work on the thousand night side versus the application owner which probably is searching or building or looking at a um... dashboard on the Splunk side yeah, that's a really good call out because yeah, I was kind of sitting here going, where uh, where would I as a per practitioner spend my time? And and that's a that's a really good delineation there. Yeah, and, and both are interested in reducing mean time to resolution, trying to find the root cause. Right. And in order for us to find the root cause of a problem, you have to uh, be able to put your finger on it, right? Collect the right evidence. Uh, and that's actually one of the biggest problems of our market out there. You know, we have all of these tools, we have all this data flowing for different domains, and then there's no single place to correlate it all across. I think Splunk, or this would be one of the uh, best use cases for the integration, is correlation uh, across different data sources that we can centralize in Splunk, or they probably people already centralize in Splunk. Yeah. By adding the network intelligence and visibility from Thousand Eyes, you know, we can truly talk about a full stack observability or observability use cases. That's the value proposition here, right there for for, for Splunk. So we've um, covered the networking layer and now we've covered the um <laughs> the compute layer. <laughs> I see it's just moving up the stack there. Yeah, and the application <laughs> layer we're talking about, you know, getting access to some data in Splunk as opposed to having access to the to Thousand Eyes itself, so it, it makes a lot of sense. I know one of the things that I'm I'd like to I'm focusing on, and maybe by the time this episode airs uh, on Cisco, you um, the 
Abdiel touched on the search language within Splunk. It's a really powerful search and uh, language that you should learn the parameters and how to leverage it in order. Having the data in Splunk is great, but being able to traverse that and being able to see it is the is the actual um, the the actual nugget there, right? And so there's a tutorial I'm working on on how to get started with the search language in Splunk and, and kind of from an engineer network engineering perspective. So. Um, have a look out for that for that tutorial out there. Yeah, that's a good call out, Kareem. Um, you know, I I do feel like even before we even use the word observability, if you were if you were using Influx um, right. or some of the other um, you know precursors to the concept of observability, it was tough to kind of figure out how to look at the data and build those dashboards because they were tied to either a proprietary querying language or even SQL or, or, you know, some element of um, query language that just wasn't necessarily natural to our audience. You know, I think it would be really helpful, especially with Splunk now in our world, uh, to kind of dig into um, that that ability within the, the Splunk universe. Awesome. Abdiel, Abdiel what, else, what else have we got for you, for us before we let you go? Well, I, I guess I just have one message to, you know, people coming from Thousand Eyes, uh, looking to integrate, you know, the first thing that they should do is identify their use case. What is the goal to monitor? You know, if there's a specific need uh, that they need to fill a gap for, see what data you get here. Uh, start running search uh, queries here. And so that this will be the baseline for you to be able to build a dashboard because, you know, bottom line, a dashboard is a query that you are running. So, same syntax that you, there you go. have here on the search <laughs> bar, you will get on, or you can use that for your um, widget or dashboard in order for you to visualize what's useful for you while you're troubleshooting. And the best part is that, um, you know, once you find an event that's relevant to you, you can go to the Thousand Eyes site and uh, try to correlate that from a path visualization uh, perspective. So still, for a period of time, we'll be working um, in the two um, places, but uh, you can start from Splunk in terms of correlating events and then going to Thousand Eyes to find, you know, the needle in the haystack the details. in terms of mm -hmm. what's yeah. the uh, node, you know, responsible for the problem. Cool, man. Um, unfortunately, Abdiel, that's all the time we have for today. I think there's a, probably a little bit more we could dig into on this. So uh, we'll probably have you back to, to talk about this a little bit more. Um, thank you so much for your time, Snackers. Thanks for joining us yet again uh, this week. And come, come back next week for another exciting episode of Snack Minute. Thank you, Snackers. <laughs>